Today we're gonna be going over the new KC Jetfire turbos. I'm kind of gonna do a little evolution of uh, modern VGT turbos versus the original upgraded 6.0 turbos. So there's a lot going on here, so stay tuned. You're gonna learn a lot today. So we got over here is our Jetfire turbo and let's go over some of the components that are in it. Let's first of all start with the cover. This is gonna be the easiest thing to explain. This is just a standard Garrett cover. Uh, they work fine. Uh, sometimes the boots blow off because this isn't a great connection. And then it's a 58 AR cover with just a standard map groove in it. What we have here is our upgraded KC cover. It's got a larger inlet with the drilled hole ported surge ring. It's got an upgraded mat groove. It is larger and angled to support the airflow. And it is a larger AR cover. You got a 58 AR cover versus a 0.70 AR cover. The boot outlet is much better, so less likely to blow out boots. And you can see overall the cover flows more. If you look in the inlet of those turbos, you can just see the huge difference. It is a ported cover and it is, does have larger flow. So that's the cover. So we've got an upgraded KC cover. That's a lot of what people recognize. They see this, this style cover and think of us. There's lots of copies. We had a generation before this that we switched that a lot of aftermarket companies use now. And there's even some people that have started copying this, putting them on some Borg Warner turbos and, and other things. But this is the original KC turbo cover for the six liter. So let's go over the bearings. Lots of things that are upgraded in there, bearings and seals, but the big thing you guys hear about is the 360 thrust bearing. What is it and why is it upgraded? Well, this is this traditional 270 thrust bearing that comes in all the 04 to 07 turbos. And this is a 360 thrust bearing, which actually comes factory in the 03 turbos, not the 04 to 07. It's a 270 degree bearing versus a 360 degree bearing. It's got more pad surface area. It's got better oiling throughout it and it overall can handle heavier loads. So a lot of people ask about the thrust collar. So this is the 270, this is the 360. They're actually the exact same piece, except that this one split in half so that it can fit around the 360 thrust bearing where the 270 thrust bearing slides in the bottom. All right, let's go over compressor wheels. That's what we got up here in the front. This is a stock compressor wheel. This is a Power Max compressor wheel, one of the very first upgraded turbos that Garrett released. This is a generic billet wheel. We actually used to use this billet wheel for many years and we had great luck with it and it worked very well. And then this is our latest Jetfire billet wheel. There's a lot of differences. You can see that these two are cast and these two are billet. With billet, you're able to achieve certain design structures and strength that you wouldn't otherwise get out of a cast wheel. You're able to push the limits a little more with the uh, billet wheels. Uh, you can also see that these are both 11 bladed wheels and the stock is a seven by seven and the Power Max is a six by six. So if you can't look at the difference between these two wheels and tell them the different size, a quick easy way to know if you've got a stock turbo or a Power Max is to count the blades. Stock will always have seven tall blades and seven short blades, but when you look at it inside the turbo, you, you only see seven blades. The Power Max is six tall blades and six short blades, but when you look inside the Power Max, you typically just see the, the top six, but you can kind of see the bottom six a little bit too. And then we prefer what we call the GTX style uh, 11 blade wheel. We tested a lot of different wheels, the six by six, seven by seven, five blades and 10 blades. And overall, we prefer the 11 blade. It's the best combination of spool up and top end power that we have enjoyed. So this is a flank milled compressor wheel. You can see the flat blades on it. And this is a point milled or very similar to point milled. It's a new style that simulates point milled, but it's not quite point milled wheel. You can see it's got curved blades and you're able to achieve some architecture out of these wheels that others aren't. So some differences between them I've already shown you, but there is a weight difference. And I don't like to show weight because a lot of people think weight is all that matters. I can make a heavier wheel outperform a lighter wheel. So it's not all about weight, but weight can help it. So let's go ahead and weigh some of these wheels. We got the stock wheel coming in at just under 130 grams. We got the Power Max wheel coming in at 164 grams. We've got the 
Gen 1 KC wheel, or is it now just a generic billet wheel? Lots of guys use it. 152 grams. And then we've got our new Jetfire, which comes in at 136 grams. So of the billet wheels, it is the lightest. And it is seven, what was that? Seven grams heavier. I mean, this is a much larger wheel. This is a 59 millimeter versus a 64 millimeter for seven grams. That's a big difference. We're able to squeeze a lot of weight out of there without it sacrificing any reliability. Some of the problem with going with too light of wheels and too thin of hubs is you'll have burst issues. You can have reliability of blades breaking off. They can flex and bend under high speeds and snap. So you really gotta be careful with going too thin and too light with the blades. Now we've got turbine wheels right here. This is a 13 bladed turbine wheel that comes in most of the stock turbos. This is a 10 blade Power Max or 03 turbine wheel. It was used for many, many years by, and it's still used by many people as the upgraded wheel in their turbos. We use it for many years. And then we've got our new Jetfire turbine wheel. So first of all, let's look at these two. You've got the 13 blade over here and the 10 blade over here. These tend to spool up just a little bit quicker because of the extra blades is able to grab that air, but it's more restrictive on the top end and this doesn't hardly whistle at all. The Power Max or the O3 turbine wheel is 10 blades. You can see it's got a little bit thinner of a hub up there, a little bit longer of blades, and it's got less blades. It does spool up a little slower, but it flows a lot more on the top end. So this was a nice upgrade. A lot of people still use this as an upgrade to today. We have drop-in 10 blade turbine wheels just like these that'll drop in your turbo. You can put in your 04 and your 07, it adds that whistle and you get that little bit of extra flow. Now we've got our new Jetfire turbine wheel. This is a GT40 based wheel or, or a Powermax based wheel. This is a hybrid between a precision and a Garrett wheel. We kind of took some of the design aspect we liked out of both of them and put it into the same wheel. It is similar in size and profile, but the blade profile is slightly different. It's got a slimmer hub on there. It's got a strengthened webbing on the back to help aid in reliability, especially under high boost levels or high back pressure levels, and it is lighter. So let's go through and weigh these turbine wheels. We got the stock 13 bladed wheel. It comes in at 566 grams. Got the 10 blade wheel or the Power Max wheel, standard GT40 wheel. It comes in at 506 grams, so it is a little bit lighter than the stock 13 blade. And then you've got our upgraded Jetfire turbine wheel, which comes in at 448 grams, so it's significantly lighter. But the same thing here. You gotta be careful with going too light of turbine wheels. I've seen a lot of people that go too thin on the hub, or too weak on the webbing on the back or too thin on the blades and the wheels will burst or they'll just explode under high boost pressures and or their blades will melt right here when they're under high load. So you take the upgraded compressor wheel, the upgraded jet fire turbine wheel, our upgraded bearing system and our upgraded compressor cover and you put it all together and you get our new 6.0 jet fire turbo. It does come in stage one and stage two. So the stage one is a great upgrade. It's great for towing, works great on stock injectors. We like it up to about 175.30 for the max injector size. And the stage two also works great on stock injectors, but if you're never gonna go bigger than stock injectors, you should just get the stage one. The stage one turbo we recommend for about five to 550 horsepower and the stage two we recommend for about 550 to 600 is the limit. I've seen some much bigger numbers out of there. I've seen as much as 650 out of a stage two. It's just not normal. It's not the typical range for it. It was a really good running truck, uh, but that's just the average horsepowers that we recommend and that what we've seen. And there you have it, our Jetfire turbos, what's upgraded in them and what are all the benefits of it.